Wind, wind. And more wind. And more wind. <laughs> this uh, has been a very fast trip. <laughs> yeah, the Peloponnese are... The Peloponnese have a lot of northwesterlies or northeasterlies, and uh, there aren't that many places with good holding. Um, and we've had, we've had to make a couple of fast dashes yeah, uh, in a, in tiny weather windows, uh, but you'll see that in the video. Um, hope you enjoy this one. Yeah. And we'll see you at the end. <laughs> okay. In this video, we show you how we clean really really dirty fenders and of course we show you how they got dirty in the first place we move even further south along the Peloponnese the great mainland and discover a little anchorage which is seldom used when the canals open and we sit out winds in Elephonsis a fantastic anchorage where you can anchor either side of the peninsula and get really good protection Last time on SV Pavidus, we told you how we'd made a run for Kalamata, an industrial port at the northern end of the second finger of the Peloponnese in Greece. And the port is very industrial. There's a small marina next door, but with the canal closed, it's completely full, very busy. Unusually, you pay by the day, not by the night. So if you book for three nights, you'll actually end up paying three days. Also, within 20 minutes or so of tying up alongside, you'll find that the customs officials visit your boat and ask you to come and check in. What they don't tell you is that you also have to check in with the port authority, the port police that is, and get your tepee stamped. Now that's not a problem, because they're only a couple of hundred yards or a couple of hundred metres from where we parked the boat. But you must be aware you've got to do it. The local airport was quite busy with the firefighting planes and helicopters coming in every 40 minutes or so. Let's give you an aerial view of the port. This is a loading gantry that goes to a disused warehouse on the left of the picture. Just had to try and fly under it, didn't I? These boats that you see here are boats that were damaged during the Medicaid last year. They've set out on the hard ever since.
pink and blue buildings on the right of the picture coming into view on the Port Police and Customs, this is where you'll need to check in. On the left hand side there's a massive jumbo superstore, handy for bits and pieces. The main town is to the north in this direction and there's a huge shopping centre about a kilometre away. And yes, it includes a Lidl's. I just want to reiterate, this is a commercial port. Unless you're a super yacht, there's no water, no electric and no diesel. And there's a distinct lack of tying up points, but it's a good hidey hole if you know how to do your lines. So Viking Venus has just arrived, literally it's uh, half past seven Greece time, so two hours ahead of UK we're getting ready to go we've had a bit of a, a rubbing issue on these tires and Cindy only cleaned the fenders up a couple of days ago I have to get onto the hull as well but it will come off but the boat is absolutely filthy so no water no electric we've had the generator on because we've been under the shadows of Eternite on the panels and of course our own shadows and those of this gantry here which I flew under with the with the drone yesterday so I put a little clip in so there's an entrance there which is supposed to be locked but it's open there's another one down there which is always open very industrial but somewhere to sit out the winds and today there's very little wind so we're just going to poop all down the coast it's only 25 miles um, to the center finger of the Peloponnese we're going to tuck ourselves into a nice little bay and then tomorrow we'll do another 25 miles go round the second finger of the Peloponnese and up to another anchorage which is uh, pretty well protected and the Meltemi's coming through for the next seven days, so we need to find uh, somewhere with good holding and good. Uh... What's that? Yeah, sorry, good holding and good shelter. Right, I saw something on the wall, couldn't work out what it was. Okay, so engine's warming up now, electronics are on, inverters charging all the 240 stuff. And away we go. It's been a good a good stay for us. We've been, been out of the wind, but the boat is filthy. Look at those fenders. Absolutely filthy. Um, and we haven't got enough fresh water to wash it down, so we've got some of the Starbright uh, boat wash, which you can use with salt water, so we'll wash that down. And it's uh, environmentally friendly. We'll wash it down when we get to an anchorage, take the muck off the boat. It's mainly kind of uh, cement dust and rubber stains and what have you and then we'll clean up the fenders as well so yep yeah, there we are another day another bay coming off slowly we just spent three days against a commercial dock leaning against some really black tires so ant has got a wonderful job cleaning the fenders while we're on passage to our next anchorage she shouldn't really use gym or plastic because it's um mildly abrasive it doesn't contain an awful lot of ammonia like it used to years ago and that's because people were extracting the ammonia out of it for naughty purposes but it does it does work on these fenders they're five year old fenders so yeah but we'll put a coat of wax over them after yeah. the time we well, clean them all up get a coat of wax on them clean them up do for another couple of months. You can actually 
polish them with a, uh, a cutting wax. Polish them with a cutting wax on a buffing wheel and come up really well. But this is coming off slowly. Good job we didn't have those awful fender socks. Because <laughs> not only would they be black, but they'd be full of salt water scratching the side of the boat when it dries off. I hate fender socks with a passion. Yeah, but that's your personal opinion. Well, yeah. Lots of people do like it. Anyone parks next to me and they've got fender socks, please lift your fenders. I don't want my boat scratched. The salt water dries and then crystallises and then you get salt water crystals, it's like sandpaper. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, get on with your job. Yeah. I've got to go to mine now. Uh, there we go. 45 minutes later. All clean. This one hasn't come up as good as I wanted on the top here. But I've got some magic formula that will take those rings out. But the other two come up lovely. I will uh, put some magic formula on this, clean this one down, and then we'll get some good quality polish and polish them so that the water tends to run off rather than uh, just sit on there and stain and then they can go back over the side so we headed south and actually we had quite a decent sail and motor sail and decided to go around the tip of the middle finger of the Peloponnese to this place a quiet little anchorage that doesn't get used that much but obviously this year it's being used a lot more Now there's actually quite good holding in this anchorage and there's another anchorage just a few miles away further down but we decided on this one as there was more room to swing in the upcoming winds that were going to come from the west. Oh, quite sheltered in here, not very deep, um, out where this little fender boy thing is only about three meters and then it drops off to 22 fairly quickly but out where David is it's actually about six or seven we're the other side of the super yacht that is kind of pretty very clear water pebbly beach Another building on the hill. Moon and noon up there. Shouty people in the background. When we were in Proviso, we met up with Steve and Judy from Sailing Ferrile. They've got a YouTube channel. It's really good. Very professionally done. There's some great advice on there as well. Steve really goes into the detail of what he's showing you. There's a link in the description. Go over and check their channel out. Say hi from us. Anyway, the observant among you will have noticed in the last four or five videos, Sailing in Ferrol has been in some of the drone shots. And as we're both going on the same route, our paths keep crossing. Sailing in Ferrol, Oscar. So we've just taken Oscar for a walk. Swinging away at anchor. Big caves behind us here. Might take a look at them in the morning if we've got time. It's only about 15, 17 knots. Um, where we dropped our anchor, we had about 10 metres of depth, about 8 under the keel, and then we dropped back put 50 metres of chain out, we're now sitting in 25 metres of water. Um, we've driven back on it really hard, so it should be okay. So yeah, very busy this year, because of course the Corinth is closed, so everybody's coming around this way. Nice back 
there'll be a new set of boats in tomorrow. And David is where's David? Let's see if we can get him. So David is there and that's Sailing Farrell over there, Steve and Judy. The following morning the winds were from the west and we had a cracking sail across to this small island, Elephon Issos. I'm sure that's how it's pronounced, but I'm probably wrong. At first we went to the eastern side because the wind was from the west. But now we've changed back to the western side as the wind's predominantly from the northeast. This is some footage of the eastern side. It's really pretty. While we were there, we met up with some more YouTubers that have been friends of ours for years. But more about that next time. Well, the <laughs> we're still on the move. Well, we're not on the well, not move. At the moment, we're We've been here four days, and we've got another four or five days to sit the wind out. Yeah. Um, and not, it's not a bad place to be. It's not, not a bad place to be. The winds aren't particularly strong. Um, let's, get, let's get that clear. The, um, they tend to top out at sort of 30, 35 knots. And we've sailed in the North Sea and <laughs> the North Atlantic in, in that kind of weather. In fact, when we crossed from the UK to France, we had yeah. those big seas and winds. But the difference is here... It changes very, very quickly from, from nothing to 35 knots. Um, you need to be prepared to reef extremely quickly. And the chop or the, the swell has a very short wave interval, um, which makes it extremely uncomfortable. Not particularly for us, but for poor old yeah, Oscar. Oscar really doesn't like it. Um, Calamatra. It was an experience. Yeah, very commercial. <laughs> Finally finished cleaning the boat. <laughs> yeah, very commercial. Unless you're a super yacht, um, you're not going to enjoy it there. No water, no diesel, no electric. <clears throat> it was good for provisioning, though, which we needed at the time because we hadn't been into, into any ports for, well, for ages, for weeks. For ages, yeah. 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 So that, that, that part of it was good because there was a little. <laughs> um, we've had to... Uh, pick our weather windows uh, selectively and do a lot of short sharp dashes and there's not a lot of places in the Peloponnese where there's good holding and that's basically because of the way that the, the mountains form and the seabed is it, they tend to be very deep not a lot of sand and quite a bit of rock hmm. but we've um, we've been okay we've been lucky so far um, we had 30 plus knots of wind the day before yesterday we're tucked in a little bay uh, with about 15 or 20 other boats and one boat that's uh, well two or three boat lengths behind us has some video bloggers on old friends of ours they've got their own channel um, you probably know them but we keep meeting up with video bloggers we do. Steve, and Judy, good fun. <laughs> Steve and Judy on Fair Isle with almost every anchorage we've been into uh, Steve's been there or Steve and Judy have been there and that's simply because uh, the lack of decent anchorages and we're all kind of heading the same way um, as always a big thank you to all our patrons yeah without you patrons we wouldn't be making videos so if you enjoy our videos um, go over and maybe think about being a patron it's it's less than a decent cup of coffee or a decent beer once a month and it helps us to keep producing these videos upgrading our equipment and hopefully getting better at making videos for your information uh, your entertainment otherwise hit the like and the subscribe which is somewhere <laughs> down there somewhere um, I'll put one right in the middle I'll put a subscribe thing right in the middle until next time sail safe sail safe bye bye